Hello folks, welcome to this new video. I'm Andrew from Yellow Hat Games and today we're going to talk about signals. If you're using Godot Engine, you probably already got into signals, but what are signals? You can think to signals like messages that nodes exchange between them. Now, these messages can be empty, so they just trigger something, or they can have data inside, so you can exchange data between nodes. But let's jump inside Godot and let's see what signals look like and how to code them, how to create your own and personalized ones, how to connect them and, and so on. Okay guys, like I was saying, there is an emitter and a receiver. Now, those two guys need to communicate between them. Now, the emitter emits the signal and this signal needs to get to the receiver, but if the receiver is not watching for the signal, nothing is going to happen basically. In order to make that happen, we need to connect them. Now, the thing is that there are different nodes each node has its own signals. If you go here on the timer, there's a timeout. If you go on the color rag, there are these ones here, mouse entered, mouse exit. And definitely there are other signals that the engine uses and you can detect them if you connect to those signals. Now let's open a new scene. Let's add a note here. And I'm going to add just in area to D like I was saying, nodes have different signals and each node has its own signal. Now, specifically in the area to D, which we're going to use for an example today, it has its own signals. And to find the signals, you just need to go to node here in the expector. And here there are the signals tab and there's the group tab as well. But, but we're just going to see the signals today. Here there are all the signals. Now, what is going to happen is that to, in order to make things work, we need to connect these signals. Now, if I click on connect, this window pops up and it is watching for a GD file, a GD script. And if we don't have it, it's not going to connect. Basically, we cannot connect anywhere except this area collision here. I'm going to give the area to D a, a GD script and it created it for us. And now if I click here, mouse enter it, and I can definitely connect it to itself in this case, but you can connect it to whatever node that is located in your scene three, basically. So just click connect and it creates a function for us. Now this function here is going to be called each time that the signal is emitted, basically each time that this signal is triggered. In this case, specifically, it's triggered by the mouse that enters the collision area. I'm just going to modulate the, the color here and modulate equals to color. Just going to pick some color here and let's make it green. And now I want that when mouse exit, it's going to be red basically. So reconnect that and modulate again. Here we're going to pick again a color and it's going to be red. Here we are. If I run it, red, green, red, red, green, basically, red, green. This was how you connect predefined signals, but you can create your own signals as well. Basically, if you go here, you just write signal and inside here, you just give it a name. Uh, I'm going to call it my signal, basically. This signal may have arguments inside, name, surname, and so on. And each time you're emitting this signal, you need to give this argument. And how does that work? Now, to emit that signal, basically, we're going to emit it this way. We just type emit signal, emit signal, and we're going to find our signal here. Here it is, my signal, or we can just type my signal. Now, like you can see, it, it's not asking us for the arguments, but we need to put some arguments here because if not, it's going to give us null. Or in this case, I'm just deleting the arguments. Uh, I'm not using it with the arguments spacing data, but just basically triggering a signal and triggering functions. If I run this code, nothing is going to happen basically because no one is watching for this signal. No one is going to detect this signal. We need to make sure that this signal is detected. So in order to make that, we need to connect to this specific signal of this area to D. In this case, we're working with the same node. So basically we just write connect. Here we type 
my signal we're going to connect to ourselves because our node basically and i'm going to create a function for this because the function is going to be triggered each time the signal is um, is emitted my function so basically we need that function so we're going to write it down here and i'm going to call it my function and i'm going to print my signal is emitted okay it says my signal is emitted my signal is emitted and my signal is emitted this is how you connect them by code basically now let's see if i can connect between two different nodes now i'm going to get here a node d and i'm going to give to node d a script here now if i go inside to area to d we can connect them like it was a normal signal basically we can just click on connect and we can definitely connect to this one because to the node to d because we have a gd script there and i can use this way connecting that and here print my signal is working okay my signal is working down you can see it down here here it is i'm going to disconnect this one basically this time we're going to connect like we did the other time but in order to connect we need to find the specific name and the specific pre uh, position basically so we need to use it like this get parent and then we click on get node and we're going to use area to d and this time we type connect and here my signal okay and we're going to connect to ourselves and we're going to connect to to this function here on area to d my signal because it already exists but remember if you connect by code you need to create a function to be triggered and let's see if it's working it should be working fine here it is my signal is working and it's working okay now with godot 3.5 you can access to node with a unique name and that's a great thing but now normally if you want to connect between nodes uh, you need to remember like i said the right position in the in the node 3 and that's kind of annoying because basically if i change the position of this node under another node i need to remap everything by get parent get parent get node and so on basically the way i use signals is pretty different i use a singleton basically which stores all my signals now how do you use singletons i already have a tutorial about that now just create a file here new script it's going to be global here it is if i open global here okay we have it just go to project settings auto load let's find global this one open and add it's already enabled now by using a global file a single tone basically we can access this file from everywhere so basically i'm just going to write here a signal and i'm going to call it my signal 2 <laughs> such a great fantasy man right and i'm going to save it now fantastic thing is right now that we can call that signal from here just by writing glow that is global basically dot emit signal and i find here my signal too and this is going to trigger that signal now if i go here to my to my node to d i just need to connect to glow dot connect and here i find my signal too i'm going to connect to ourself and last but not least area to d that one so we're going to trigger this function again so let's run this should be working fine now basically like you can see this is working and and it's working well it's it has the same function now what i'm going to do to make it sure that you understand what i meant with the three position is just adding a new node to d and my main node here that has the signal uh, connection and everything i'm going to move it under this other node here normally if we use the get parent and the predefined way of finding nodes it it won't work but look at this what is happening basically it's going to work anyway so my signal is working pretty well now to make sure that you really understand this i'm using the same thing for a project i'm working on now to make sure that you understand what i'm talking about i'm using the same method basically for a little piece of software that i'm creating and these are some color picking nodes and i use them everywhere basically and they will work because they just trigger a signal in the in the singleton basically and look how this works 
Now, each of those is working and they are located right here, basically. And they change the background color, nothing special really, but that's their function. Now, I have this background color and menu here, basically. And if you see, and this thing here is a scene. And this scene basically is saved as a its own, its own thing. And if I use it inside here, it's going to work anyway. And basically, if I move this, this one under the sprite here, it's going to work anyway. Now, I'm going to move all those under the sprite just to make sure that you understand that because it's going to work anyway because they are independent from the position because they are independent from the uh, scene 3 location basically okay they are a thing to a script that is located up above the root scene basically they are using this file here g signals while our game is under g signals basically we have it up above and we can call it everywhere anywhere whenever we want Okay guys, this was all. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you learned something. Let me know down in the comments how do you use signals if you learned something or there is a better way to implement them because I'm learning as well but, and this is my own way on using them. So definitely there may be other and better solutions out there. So please give a look to the links down in the description. There are my projects. There is the Android Dev Pack so you can download it. It's, it's being updated every day so I'm putting new stuff inside the new nodes and and new ready to use scripts please check my game slime and sliders i definitely need some feedback and i'd appreciate it to, to know what do you think about that okay this was all if you like the video please leave a like and subscribe to the channel this definitely helps to grow the channel i really appreciate that and more important keep devin games